An independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, says it has received the judgment of the Court of Appeal reinstating at least 22 political parties in the country. INEC's National Commissioner and Chairman of Information and Voter Education Committee, Festus Okoye, confirmed the receipt of the judgment in a statement on Monday. The Advanced Congress of Democrats, ACD, Progressive People's Alliance, PPA, and 20 others were reinstated by the appellate court. But the electoral umpire said a total of 23 political parties were released by the four-man panel of judges led by Justice Shodipe Lukulu. Okoye decried that the same court had upheld its decision to deregister the political parties only for it to later fault its action. The ANEC official added the commission is therefore faced with two conflicting judgments from the Court of Appeal, one affirming the powers of the commission to deregister political parties and the other setting aside the, the, the registration of ACD and 22 others. Joining us live is Fesso Sokoye, the INEC National Commissioner in charge of voter education. Also joining us live is Ramana Debi, the Chairman, Liberation Movement Party, Lagos State. We'll also be speaking with uh, Evan Suferli, a legal practitioner. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you so much. I'm going to start with um, um, uh, Professor Sokoye this morning. Um, ordinarily, it's expected that um, you know, there would be respect for court orders and, um, um, of course, you, the INEC would do just what the court has ordered. So why is there an appeal this time? Uh, well, you know, the, the, this president commission um, has, as one of these cardinal principles, uh, complete obedience uh, to the orders of all properly constituted courts of law. And to that particular extent, if you noticed, um, in the last three, four years, uh, this commission has been obeying all court orders. Now, the challenge here is that uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission carried out verification of the status of all political parties uh, to make sure that they still comply with the incidence of their registration and they also comply uh, with all the other uh, uh, registration requirements under the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Now, after this verification, uh, the commission found out that some of the, the registered uh, political parties no longer maintain an office in the federal capital territory as required by law. We also found out that most of them did not satisfy the constitutional provision as laid down in section 225A of the constitution. And the, on the basis of that, the commission has decided to deregister this political party. Now, the challenge here is that, as of today, there are over five judgments from various federal high courts and various uh, high courts uh, relating to the issue of the registration of political parties. And all those judgments were in favor of the Independent National Electoral Commission. Uh, two, uh, two of those matters uh, went to the Court of Appeal. In the case of NUP, that was decided in, um, uh, by the Court of Appeal on the 29th day of July 2020, the court affirmed the powers of the Independent National Electoral Commission to deregister political parties in accordance with Section 225A of the Constitution. Now, the, the NUP is dissatisfied with that particular judgment and has approached the Supreme Court, uh, asking the Supreme Court to set aside that particular judgment. And now, yesterday, the commission received another judgment uh, uh, relating to the same issue of the registration of political parties uh, in favor of the Advanced Congress of Democrats and 22 others, saying that the com commission did not comply with due process in the registration of these political parties. So as far as the commission is concerned, uh, these two judgments are conflicting. And based on that, the commission wants a final interpretation of his powers and a final pronouncement of his powers uh, by the Supreme Court uh, because we cannot pick and choose which of the two uh, judgments from the same court uh, the Commission should obey. Uh, so as, as a right. abiding institution, we have decided to approach the Supreme Court for a final verdict on the powers of the Commission. Okay. Under right. and, and I'm, I'm, expect, I'm expecting that this means that whatever the Supreme Court decides, INEC will, um, of course, uh, go on with that. Definitely. All right, let's also talk about, um, of course, the atmosphere among inter-party groups across the country now. How do you think this might also affect the upcoming Edo state election? Uh, no, 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 no. This, the, the, the judgment of the Court of Appeal has nothing to do with the Edo state gov uh, governorship elections. Uh, this is because uh, on the uh, 6th day of February uh, 2020, 
uh, the commission released the timetable and schedule of activities uh, for the conduct of the Edo governorship elections. And this uh, timeline and schedule of activities are derived both from the constitution and from the electoral act. And if you look at section 178, subsection 2 of the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, it gives the commission uh, a, a circumscribed timeline uh, within which to conduct uh, what we call end of tenure governorship um, elections. And if you also look at section 31, uh, 31, 32, uh, uh, 31 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of, uh, of the Electoral Act 2010 as amended, it gives us a step-by-step -step, uh, a procedure on what to do in relation uh, to the governorship elections. All the uh, uh, political parties um, uh, contesting the, uh, the governorship elections uh, have filed their nominations electronically. Uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission has uh, also allowed uh, substitution of candidates and political parties. We have published the list and particulars of all the candidates uh, contesting this election in the constituency where they are contesting this uh, uh, particular election. Uh, so as far as the commission is concerned, we are proceeding uh, with the dual governorship elections and this particular judgment has nothing to do with the uh, what we have done because what we have done as of today uh, can be said to be covered under the constitution and under the electoral act 2010 as amended. All right, I'm, I'm going to move to uh, Evan to fairly um, a legal practitioner who's also joining us. Um, l let me ask you this Justice Dongman Mensem held that the deregistration was illegal because INEC failed to comply with due process of the law. Um, I, want, I want you to help um, us understand the likely implication of this judgment. Um, and also uh, bear in mind that there was also a, um, a judgment from the um, Federal High Court in Abuja um, also this year saying something different. So, so go ahead and please share with us. Well, um, the, the, the case in question, uh, the political parties uh, so aggrieved approach the courts in different um, occasions, asking for different reliefs. So what the court have done is to straighten the position of the law as regards the issue of uh, the registration of political parties. If you look at the constitution graphically, INEC have overstepped its bound when it comes to uh, registration of political parties because um, um, the creation of political parties and the membership of political parties has to do with the fundamental rights of Nigerians, okay? And that sets down. No person, no institution in this country have the power, okay, to stop an association from congregating and conducting activities that are within the bounds of law. So when they got the judgment February uh, 2020, when the court of first instance uh, gave judgment that I never have such powers to deliver that political party, I did say then that this judgment will not stand. It will not stand in the sense that the powers of INEC as subscribed or as laid down in the 1999 constitution is very, very clear. INEC have powers to register political parties and they have powers to conduct election, manage electioneering and the affairs of political engagement in Nigeria, and then make sure that they have guidelines because the Constitution also empowered them to you know, come up with guidelines from time to time within which elections can be conducted and have a smooth sailing process. Those are the powers of INEC. The power to deregister political party or an association or whatsoever, it's not within the confines of the tradition of INEC. And I wonder why, having registered some political parties uh, uh, some months ago, um, they turn around and then begin to say that the party, because the parties no longer maintain office here, because the party no longer maintain uh, 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 meetings or they don't congregate any longer, therefore, uh, they can be deregistered. You cannot begin to create powers outside the 1999 constitution, just so that you can use such powers to begin to interrogate right. yeah. the political process and engagement. No. Okay. So okay. the implication of the judgment is that uh, where I heard the uh, person from INEC who just said that uh, INEC is going, uh, if INEC is going to the Supreme Court, they will bring a state of execution to that judgment and then proceed to exhaust their 
options of appeal. So the Supreme Court will now decide and state the facts clearly as to whether or not they have these powers to the register political parties or not. But as I say that um, the constitution does not empower INEC to the register any political party. It is very clear and graphic. Okay, I, I want you to go on quickly because we're gonna go back to um, uh, Professor Sokoye in a bit. I want you to go on quickly and share with us what you think went wrong um, with the um, uh, ruling of uh, Justice Awunli Chekwere of the Federal High Court. Um, how did she, um, well, that judge interpreted that way. Um, that is entirely different from what we are seeing today. Well, the, the, well, the, interpretation, the interpretation she gave it is more understanding of uh, uh, morals. It's more understanding of um, uh, the fact that uh, they do no longer have the requirements for which they were registered with, okay? And then she cited some of the provisions of the, the Constitution, which were not really to the root of the matter. Because if you look at Chapter 4 of the 1999 Constitution, and then the fundamental rights are stated clearly there, you know, uh, every, every person in Nigeria have the right to belong to any association of his choice. And such associations also are empowered by law to exist as long as they are not into illegal activities or illegal businesses. Yeah. You understand? So nothing in the constitution gives any institution or any court the authority to the register a political party or the register an association that is you know, carrying out legal activities and legal business within the confines of the country. More of, more of what INEC is saying and propagating is that they no longer have this, they no longer have that, they are no longer here, they are no longer there. INEC function actually is not to look into what they are no longer doing or what they are doing. INEC function is to make sure that they come up with guidelines. All right. They manage the political parties. Uh, they make sure that they, they, they give widespread you know, political education and encourage participation. Okay. and conduct elections, and they have free and fair process. All right, hold on. Um, we're, we're, I have been doing its we'll best. Get, we'll, get back to, that. we'll get back but to you. I would you, think uh, that, I will um, say, Selfelling. that INEC should concentrate more on that. I know that, I know the pain of INEC. The pain of INEC is that they have to list all these political parties in the ballot papers. Yeah. You so, understand? So, and that's what and I, I want to get, get into now. Um, give give okay. me a second, Mr. But as much as it's laborious and bodysome, it is still within the right of Nigerians to belong to any political party of their choice, yeah. to air their view, to have their manifestos, and to congregate as long as what they are doing is legal and within the bounds of law. So perhaps I, I want to bring in I want to bring in Raman Adebi, um, who's also joining us. Yeah, if you would just hold on, if you would just hold on, Mr. Ufeli, um, I, I would get back to you. Um, uh, Raman Adebi, if you can hear us, I, I want you to speak on um, the number of political parties that we currently have, um, the significance of this new ruling, and do you think Nigeria needs this large number of political parties um, uh, um, currently? Well, the, the, the political parties we have, they are much because the law, you know, has set the premise upon which we should have that participation. Okay. Uh, apologies, okay. I, I'm, I'm directing that question much. to That's Ramana Debi. Okay. Um, but if we have to reduce this, the only way to fight is to amend the Constitution. Amend please hold on, the hold on, uh, Mr. Okay. Ofeli. I, I would, I'm directing that question to Ramana Debi. So. If we are going to have to let the law say so. Okay, Mr. Mr. Demi, if you can hear me, can you please uh, go ahead? Yeah, please come again, please. Yeah, I'm asking, and apologies for that, I'm asking about the significance of this uh, new ruling, and do you think Nigeria really needs this large number of political parties? Um, thank you very much. Um, Nigeria, according to the Constitution, is a multi-party state, and a multi-party state has the right to a multiplicity of parties as we have seen. And Nigeria is not the first country in the world that will have a multi-party as their person. And if you check other countries of the world, you can see the multi-party and their, and their democracy is flourishing 
and everybody is fine. And the implication of this to the uh, parties now is a jubilation mode because INEC has to comply. Because at the first instance, when the judgment was given in favor of INEC, INEC complied. And at this moment, that the implication is given uh, in favor of the, the transfer political party, INEC too must comply. Because that is the duty of democracy. And yes, INEC has a right to proceed to the uh, Supreme Court to get a further interpretation and then a judgment to obtain this. But as this stands now, the central political party has been given their right under the law to practice and exist as a party. And to say to Nigerians, they have the free right of association to join any political party of the choices. They have the right to uh, vote and participate in any election that they have. So going forward, INEC, as a, uh, from today, INEC must be given to giving the right to all parties equally to be able to participate in all coming elections before the final judgment of the Supreme Court will be. So the only thing now is now on INEC to do the, to do the needful and encourage Nigerians to you know exercise their free rights of freedom according to the law. All right, interesting. Um, and uh, back to Festus Okoye. Um, I would like um, you to speak, uh, of course, uh, in reaction to what um, Evan Tufeli had, um, uh, some statements he had made earlier, that INEC um, went beyond their powers in deregistering those parties. And it's also one of the things that was um, read in the ruling yesterday, um, that INEC didn't also give good reasons to these political parties why they were deregistered. So I want you to quickly speak on that. Um, why do you? Why would you say INEC went ahead with those um, with the move of deregistering those parties? Uh, but let, let, let me. Uh, I, I think my learned colleagues uh, misconstrue uh, the issues uh, at stake in this uh, particular uh, judgment and the issues around the constitutional provisions. Now, I completely agree. I'm a lawyer. I'm a senior member of the bar. Every individual in Nigeria has a freedom of association. No, but nobody is, nobody is um, uh, talking about that. And I also am um, an advocate of freedom of association, and people should be allowed to associate and congregate. But the same constitution says that it is not every individual who is allowed to associate and congregate that can form a political party. Uh, Section 221 makes it very clear, 221 of the constitution makes it very clear that it is only an association registered by the Independent National Electoral Commission that can canvass for votes and sponsor candidates in any election. So you can be a political association and continue to exist, but you cannot canvass for votes and sponsor candidates in any election unless you're a registered political party under the law. That is one. Mm -hmm. Secondly, Section 225A of the Constitution itself has given the Commission the power to register political parties. And if you look at Section 225A, uh, um, uh, it, it, it clearly says that if any, that the Independent National Electoral Commission shall have the power to deregister a political party for A, failure for breach of any of the requirements for registration. There are already requirements for registration under Section 221 to 229 of the Constitution. So if a political party breaches any of those requirements, under Section 225A of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the Commission can deregister it. Yeah. So okay. the powers exercised by the Commission was exercised lawfully and in accordance with the Constitution because between December and January, uh, be, between December 2019 and January 2020, INEC carried out verification of all existing political parties in Nigeria. All right, so, so, and so these I, I want you to, I want to, I want to ask. Where the commission informed them of why they were deregistered. Those who no longer maintain an office, the commission informed them. Those who did not win a single seat in any legislative house or in any of the executive positions, yeah. the commission informed them so, on why they were deregistered. So, so, Okoye, I want to ask what, what will... What will uh, INEC be seeking at the Supreme parties. Court? And so there's no doubt about the, what the commission did in relation to this. All right. I want to ask what INEC would be seeking at the Supreme Court if, um, from what you said, INEC had done verification and seen that these political parties didn't have certain requirements, and that's why they went ahead with the deregistration. So is INEC going to be seeking to continue with the deregistration 
um, if none of these things have been changed over time, if, if uh, some of the reasons why they were deregistered haven't been fixed? No, uh, the, uh, I'm, I'm not going to uh, 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 be on television and argue the matter uh, before, before, the, before the Supreme Court. Uh, INEC lawyers will go to the Supreme Court and argue, and argue the matter. One thing we want to be sure of, what are the limits of the powers of the Independent National Electoral Commission, as we have in Section 225, a of the constitution. Uh, this is because we carried that verification of this um, of these uh, uh, political parties. We checked all the elections that we have conducted so far in Nigeria, and none of them, none of these political parties, is saying, "Oh, I I satisfy the requirements of the constitution. I won uh, one uh, uh, one state of the federation in a presidential election. I won one local government." Uh, of the state in a governorship election, or that they won one word in a, ch a chairmanship election. So none of them is contesting that they won. And none has said uh, uh, we did not comply with Section 225A of the Constitution. So if any of them is claiming that he satisfied any of the provisions of Section 225A of the Constitution, if we come out and say so, none of them has said that they won any, 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 any seat. The Commission does not have any personal or personalized interest in any of these in any of these issues but right. the commission is a regulatory agency and has the power to make sure that the cost the provisions of the constitution are complied with and the com constitution has given us the power uh, to enforce compliance with the provisions of the constitution and that's what we have done and that is what we are going to continue to do all right um, let's uh, quickly just have one minute each for uh, Ramana Debi and uh, Evans Uferli. I'm going to start with um, Evans Uferli. I want you to respond um, uh, to what um, Professor, Mr. Fessor Sokoye has mentioned, you know, that the constitution gives INEC the right to deregister. Um, you had said, you know, otherwise uh, earlier that um, they could only register and, of course, monitor elections and a few other things. So I want you to quickly respond to that in a minute. And then, of course, we'll move back to Ramana Debi. The position in section... Uh, 225A yeah. of the Constitution is very clear, okay? INEC is given that power, okay, to um, the registered political party when there is a breach in the requirements of registration. When there is a breach in the requirement of registration. The Constitution is very clear about it, okay? That does not imply that INEC have the powers to spring up surprise mark political parties, mark them not, mark them breaching the rules of the constitution or the provisions of the constitution and then deregister them. That will make INEC, okay, the judge, the prosecutor and everything in its own case. And that is why the court is saying no. Because if you give, if you give institutions that arbitrary power to act in ways INEC have acted in the past, you are going to have a complete chaos in society. This thing happened before. There was a time I met the registrar of political parties. Ganefa Ami SAN, the late Ganefa Ami SAN, went to court, okay? And then the, the, the law was set there straight. And then a precedent was created that I met, okay, by the spirit and letters of the constitution, have no such powers to deregister political parties in the light and the manner in which they did it that time. Now they repeated it again. And then the court is now saying that going by the spirit and letters of the constitution and the fundamental rights of Nigerians together with the rights to belong to any political party of your choice, okay? And they have no such powers to register such political parties in the manner at which All right. they did say. Okay, we can we can uh, we can uh, leave it there. Let's uh, then wrap up with um, Ramana DB. It's been a, a interesting, you know, hearing um, uh, both uh, Fesso Sukui and, um, uh, of course, um, Evans uh, Ufeli. I want your thoughts on what you feel might be quick electoral reforms that Nigeria must um, uh, quickly implement um, in, in the quickest possible time. Yeah. The, first and foremost, I think. Um, I'll quickly get to that quickly, and I think INEC must observe and take this rule, uh, this this court judgment, and implement it because implementation is very key. Because the rule says the seventy-four parties 
that action is null and void, and you store them and release them as a political party. I think INEC must comply because that's fundamental, that's strengthening our democracy, and that will put the rule of law back to its order. And going to for reforms, I think there must be, uh, we've been carrying out different stakeholder uh, engagement among political party and INEC and everybody involved. Going forward, the authority to the register party, on my point of view, you know, to be taken further to the, to the, uh, to the judiciary, to, to the case to be proven, because you cannot be a judge in your own case. INEC cannot think from a corner of the office and say that today, based on my uh, biased mind or, or mindset or the criteria that I feel at, at a particular point in time, I put it together and I'm going to pass it. Let them prove right. it beyond reasonable doubt in a court of law. Let it be satisfied that even the person that is uh, the party that is going to be registered will follow due process, and this due process must be applicable to all parties. Because okay. in this case, INEC is saying that they follow due process, and I can <laughs> say boldly that this due process has not been fully complied with because the elections of the federal, state, and local government, uh, as, as it constitutes the circle of the 2019 election, has, has not been completed. And as you can see, two are still in the process for a do. And uh, and own those states. And all right, uh, some of that are coming for local government. Mm -hmm. So if I is saying that he has fulfilled all the requirements, do you per chance just on the winds of the fact that few ones have not, uh, few ones have been done, you can now say, okay, from eighty percent, I can take my magnitude of percentage and take a judgment on that. I think that is not fair on Nigerians. All right, that's not fair on the rule of law. Thank you very and much. That's not fair on the sanity of Nigerians who have come to participate in this election, who have come to spend their resources, who have been in a situation to move Nigeria forward. Thank you very That's much. That's my view as to this position. All right. Thank you um, to the three of you, Fessa Sokoye, uh, Marman Adebi, and uh, Evan Tufeli, for uh, sharing your thoughts with us in this very, very interesting uh, uh, discussion on the breakfast this morning. Thanks once again. Thank you. Thank you so much.